just like Tessa took us through the consumer experience, Pete took us through the producer experience. So what did we go? We looked through a data contract experience, both from a UI and a core perspective. Our goal is as the data contract specs evolve, you can put, put this in something like a Git repository and push this to Applin as part of the CICD pipelines, which can give you a first class native experience on Applin. Domain 360, uh, personalization and product creation. So for data product creation, again, the goal is same. How do we balance both the worlds? People who are just starting up and also customers who are building these product specs, Yaman's DBT project in their GitHub, how to balance both the worlds going forward. Pete, but it looks like we have one more persona pending and you might have to play dual identity today. Are you ready to pick up the next one? Absolutely. I mean, we work hard here at Atlin, always have to wear multiple hats. So I'm not just your data engineer today, but we have more in the bag. We're going to talk today about our domain owner experience. So I'm going to jump right into our demo here. I'll start here from Teams. After all, who among us doesn't have Slack, Teams, or similar open constantly? And right now I'm thinking more as a domain owner. So I'm not an individual data uh, engineer trying to do one-off requests. I'm thinking holistically about how to manage all the data across my part of our complex organization. Now, what I can do here is jump directly in to say our finance domain. And again, that's sitting directly in Teams. No need to jump into a new interface. Atlin always exists in the tools that you wanna work in. So this is our finance domain. And what we're bringing here is programmatic governance of all useful data in this domain. When I say useful, I mean curated data that drives business value. If I run finance analytics at our company, this means I don't want any more manually updated Confluence pages, SharePoint sites, or Notion docs, which all inevitably fall out of date. This microsite scales from my very first data product to hundreds of complex products seamlessly. So why do we need this? Well, we all know our data is getting more complex. Brilliant products across the modern data stack are making things easier and easier, but that just lets us do more and more with data. This introduces new risks in security and compliance, new roles like analytics engineers, and higher expectations, the move from batch to streaming. We hear constantly from customers and industry leaders about the need for managing these complex data states at scale without yet another tool that adds to the complexity. A microsite like this gives you a one-stop shop for your data landscape, as programmatic and scalable as you would like it, no matter where on your data maturity journey you are. As you've no doubt seen on this page, we capture all kinds of key information, the relevant products in our domain, use, usage, users, and key stakeholders, downstream assets and related contracts, letting us know where in our data state this works and the context to effectively collaborate across our company. We've seen a lot of lineage so far today, but I'll jump into one more lineage view. This is the absolutely super simplistic, again, intentionally, domain level lineage. So if I run finance data, I can see how my part of the company sits within all the other parts of the company. I can jump into more details and see how the data products might flow from marketing into finance into IT. And again, this will evolve depending on your part of the step in the journey across data mesh and the modern data federated governance. So this is a scale and complexity challenge. And speaking of scale and complexity, who among us sometimes just doesn't want to go to the old comfort, the old standby, Microsoft Excel? So you may have heard a few months ago that Microsoft launched Python in Excel. At Atlin, as a data team, we all thought that was hilarious. Things are coming full circle. Data science moving back into Excel. But if Microsoft can do that, we can do Atlin in Excel. I'll jump here into our Microsoft SharePoint Excel experience, Office 365. And we've got the Atlin add-in for Excel here. So I'm really excited to demo this and all the different features. So we can take all kinds of actions directly from Excel. And again, I was speaking as a finance domain data owner. I'm in Excel all the time, pivoting, doing VLOOKUPs. I work out of spreadsheets and that's where I wanna be. That's where I wanna operate my data products as well. So I can do things like run queries, import lineage, document columns. Today, what I'm gonna do is enrich product assets. So what is that gonna do? That's gonna pull down all the data products in my domain and give me an option to add any information to them that I might wanna do directly from Excel. Maybe I don't wanna jump into the Atlin UI and have to do this. 
I'm a spreadsheet person. So what I've done here is I've chosen the data product that we were looking at recently. It's imported. These are row by row, all the different individual assets that we were looking at. Tables, looker files, individual BigQuery columns. Maybe in my company, we've launched a new product and I'm worried about customer PII flowing downstream into my data products and reports. I'd like to do some federated governance. So I'm going to say, hey, this fact sales table, I'd like to tag this as PII. Now this tag is going to push back into Atlin when I sync it. And that's going to apply access control policies. I'm using tags here as a nice federated way to shift left in my data governance approach. And if Excel isn't your cup of tea, it's an Atlin guiding principle that we operate where the humans of data are. So you could just as easily have been in Snowflake for this. Added your PII tag in Snowflake, sync that into Atlin. And you know what? We've taken this one step further. You can be in Atlin itself, tag PII into Atlin, push that down into Snowflake. Things really come full circle. So as seamless as it can be, Atlin operates wherever you want to be. Let's jump back into our domain. So we'll go over here to our finance domain. Now, when we manage our entire data domain, we can use our domain reporting center for all kinds of useful information to help us ensure that the data products we build are driving value from usage to certification to trends over time. What I can look at over here actually is I can go down and see, hey, what tags have been pushed? All right, my PII tags have made it end. Now, we've covered a lot in terms of creating and updating data products, monitoring them in a reporting center like this. And one of the key things here is customers tell us all the time about legacy data debt, unused tables, pipelines, and reports. Those are getting lost in the millions of data assets. And especially with today's cloud computing requirements, this debt isn't free. We can programmatically track that in a reporting center like this and ensure that the data that's being used is driving value, the data that's not is being deprecated. Well, Pete, you might say, cool, a dashboard. I have dashboarding tools. I don't want any more of those. Give me something automated. Give me something programmatic. I thought this was computational federated governance. Well, how else can we automatically deprecate old content? Atlin comes with all kinds of automation. In-app, there's a seamless concept for bulk rules application called Playbooks. Outside the app, there's incredible extensibility via SDKs and APIs to connect, to connect in a heartbeat to whatever you want to use. So wherever you are, you can push the edge of things with that. 